So quick note before we start the video, um, before I get any comments that ask if I'm sick or not, no, I was just recording in front of that window, so it was really bright and I'm overexposed, but hey, enjoy the video anyway, cheers. Hey guys, this is Mike. If you've been watching me for quite a while, you know that I love playing multiplayer game, competitive multiplayer game, any multiplayer game, things I can play with other people. Um, that's how I get my social, especially nowadays, right? Um, but it, I also love making these multiplayer games, though I'm not the best at it, but I'm getting there slowly. And if you ever tried making a multiplayer video game, you know that it takes a different set of knowledge. It's not just making that survival game mechanic that you've been trying to make, or making that FPS game mechanic. You also have to think on another level, like, how is my action going to interact with the server? Is that server going to be the only one who knows the real information, or should player know information as well? Um, Will I be storing my values on the server side or client side? And if I store it on the server side, how am I going to relay that information? Bunch of things that you have to think about before you get into making a game. This is usually why it's harder to make a multiplayer game than making a single player game, because you have to think of these concepts. And for a very long time, as I was learning how to program, actually, I always wanted to make a, a multiplayer game. That's actually why I got started with programming. But of course, uh, that that 17 years old me that said, hey, I want to make an MMO, got shut down quite fast for obvious reason. Because before you get to actually make that dream game of yours, that multiplayer dream game of yours, you have to learn programming and you also have to learn game design. And why do you need these two? Because when you're going to be making your multiplayer game, it's going to affect both of them. Like you're gonna to have to change the way you program and you're also gonna to have to change the way you design the game. Now, people that have that knowledge, that knowledge of making a networked game or multiplayer game, um, don't usually, or back in the days, didn't usually reveal that information that easily. You had to go work with them on the project, um, maybe through a company. You had to pay them a lot of money to get tutored. That information was not out there, not that available, you could say. Now, obviously, things change. Um, we now have access to information. We have YouTube. So that, that knowledge is actually less gated than before. The point of this video, yesterday, Unity actually gave us a little bit of that knowledge. But more importantly than that, they gave us a promise to give us more knowledge in the future regarding multiplayer. So roughly one month ago, I started looking into the newest transport layer for Unity. It's called the com.unity.transport package. And thus far, it's really going great. I've started developing one of my dream game with it, and I have not fallen into any blocking issues yet. In a way, no issue that is caused by the underlying technology, only issue that I, I made myself. But do know that I have not put my server under load, and I've, I'm very early into the process. I've chosen to develop my game using the com.unity.transport, a solution that was there, and, and Unity said they were supporting, but we all know what what happened to the previous solutions. And the reason I started using that is because uh, according to their timeline, we were gonna get a new release of that um, early 2021, so Q1 of 2021. So I've been rambling for way too long. What is that update? Well, that update is a documentation site. Yep, I know it's a bit different than I expected, but at least we get something and uh, we get nice promises that it's gonna go, so. But let's actually open up this thing. In here, you'll find three distinguished sections. The first one is about ML API, which is, I believe it's an API, it's a library for making multiplayer game that they acquired recently. The second section is about the transport layer. That's, that's us. That's what we've been making uh, recently on the channel. And the third one is quite cool, actually. It's a sample project called Boss Room. More info on that in just a bit. Now you might be asking, what is the difference in between the ML API and also the transport layer? So on the ML API side, you have a very high level um, API in which you have, of course, the foundation, such as communicating in between a server and a client, but you also have things such as um, position synchronization, animation synchronization, you have connection approval, you have object pooling, you have function that will help you create objects on the network and have it created for every single client you have. So you have a lot of, um, you could say, it, it makes your life very easy when it comes down to creating a multiplayer game. On the other side, on the transport side, all you have is the means to create a communication in between the server and the client. And how you're going to package up your messages, that's up to you. 
and how you're going to inter interpret those messages is also up to you. You don't have any pre-built thing for you. So in Exile, we use only the foundation and then we build our own multiplayer solution, you could say, on top of it. So we have the very basis, right? We can do, um, we can communicate in between the server and the client through socket. We have that, we have a certain pipeline we can use as well. But then what, how I handle my package and how I deal with the inspector, how I deal with the Unity editor is, is what I define. So in my solution, I have events firing off when I receive certain message and there is no overhead, you could say. Um, anything that I don't need, I don't put in there. So it's a very lightweight, it's not a lightweight, but I could say it's the lightest version of what I need because I'm the one building it. I'm the one creating it from scratch. I only put what I need in there. Now, obviously, if you are to make a custom solution for a custom game, that one is going to be more optimized and it's also going to be more optimal for that certain game um, versus using something that is broad, just like ML API and then just trying to make your game on top of it. Now, I'm not saying that ML API is worse than my own solution because my solution is probably crap and it's not really tested and it probably has a lot of bugs in it and I still haven't done a lot of features in there. Um, it's much easier to start off with ML API. But as I want to learn, as I want to make those mistakes and actually correct them, I'm going with my own solution, but I'm going to be basing myself off what I see in ML API. For example, I don't have lag compensation on my side. So I'll try to make one myself. And if I fail, I'll just look at the MLAPI one, try to implement something like that. And it might mean that I have to rewrite my own code a lot, actually refactor the whole thing, but I'm okay with that. I usually learn by doing mistakes and then just correcting them. So that's my style and that's what I'm going for. And I'm making something very lightweight for my game. Now, another example that I want to give for MLAPI is actually something quite funny, right? So two years ago, uh, Unity came out and they said, we have a multiplayer solution for you, though it's going to be a little bit hard to use because it's using ECS and the data oriented programming. I don't know where this one is anymore. I have no clue. I just know that recently they purchased ML API and that's the thing that they're promoting now. So ML API is the one we're supposed to be using. But if I remember correctly, two years ago, there was a shooter game sample using ECS code as a backend. And there was even a talk with how Overwatch and all their server. I'm not quite sure, but I'm just saying that there's another one out there. And if you want to get good at making Unity multiplayer game using Unity solution, that's actually very important to say because you could be using something else. You could be using SmartFox, Photon, RackNet. Okay, maybe not RackNet. But if you want to get good at making something that Unity supports and provide to you, such as the transport layer or the ML API, well, I suggest that you learn the transport layer, because that's the one at the base of everything. You start there, maybe try to fiddle, create your own solution on top of it. If it doesn't work out so good, go with ML API. But why do I suggest the transport layer? Because it's the foundation of everything and because it's also very, very small. <laughs> so let's have a look at this. We have the transport layer over here. If we click on it, we now have access to a documentation site. And not the, <laughs> actually, the weird thing with this documentation site, is that it's actually the exact same as before. So with this new update, with this new big Q1 2021 update, I don't think anything actually changed. I think the package is still as is, and it's still experimental, but to be frank, I've never had any issue with it thus far, and I've been developing a game for one month and a half, which doesn't mean much, but I think I have everything I need. So um, yeah. As I mentioned, the reason I recommend this is because it is very small. You don't have much documentation to learn. You don't even have to make the project yourself. You can just read through it. They give you an example, they give you a guide, but I suggest you just have a look at it. Now let's actually check out something that changed. Here is the ML API section. In here, you can find a Hello World tutorial that's using their multiplayer solution. To me, after looking just a little bit into it, I found it to be really similar to the HL API, which was the high level multiplayer API uh, back in the days, where all you had to do really is um, put some components in your scene, such as having a network manager in your scene and having some network object through it. And you could do some more advanced stuff. If you knew a little bit more, if you dig inside of the, the documentation, you could do a little bit more than just network or synchronized position. Um, but that's really how it felt to me. And I'm really happy 
to see that they're taking a more documented approach this time. So as I mentioned, I'm actually eager to look into this because I'm going to be stealing some of their solutions, such as lag compensation or maybe how they implement RPC. Uh, it's something that I don't have just yet. And, you know, if they can, if I can actually look into this and figure out things, then that's very good. And as I mentioned, they're taking a more documented approach this time. So hopefully we're going to have some high level concept explained to us in plain English. So overall, very happy about this one. Final section is the sample project. So there ain't no better way than to wrap up documentation with a sample project. And that's exactly what the boss room is. It's a sample co-op game that you can play with your friend. Your goal is actually to go through a dungeon, clear all the minions in there, maybe clear a puzzle as well if there's one, and defeat a boss. You have some character customization at the beginning. You can choose in between four different classes and also two genders. And you can get the source code down below. So make sure you head to the description. You can download this project, have a good look at what is inside of there. I'll do it myself. If I find anything interesting, I might make a video about it as well and just discuss through all the things that they've made and my opinion on why they use these things. Though I'm not an expert, I've been looking at multiplayer game for quite a while now and I'd like to actually give my opinion on it sometime. I guess that's what this channel is for. Um, and also tutorials, mostly tutorials. So what do you guys think? Do you think we see the end of the tunnel? Do you actually think Unity is going to have a decent multiplayer solution going forward? Or do you actually know what happened to the netcode that was presented two years ago? Um, any opinion, any suggestion, please leave it in the comment section down below. I'd like to read what you have to say. I, I am very opinionated. Opin J'ai une opinion? J'ai, um, I have a very high opinion of what's going on with the multiplayer state. No, that's not what I meant. I'm very involved with what goes on at Unity Multiplayer, so let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. And as always, I'll see you soon. Cheers.